Hi, I'm Leslie Ash, and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Leslie Ash, welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. How are you today? Yeah, I'm great. I'm really, really good. I'm really getting used to the Zoom thing now. Yeah, me too. I've only just started using it and getting used to it and stuff, and I think it's going okay. We're connected and we're talking and things, but yeah, it's certainly new to me. <laughs> Just we've just been doing um, it's it's called book reads where we're getting all these different actors to um, read these amazing books that we've had on Books Office, which is this uh, web that we've uh, you know created last year, and mm. so it's to really find diverse stories that are, you know from by women quite there's a few men but most of them are women people that probably don't get a look in really because they're all these bestsellers out there, and uh, we've found some amazing stories so. We just decided, what can we do while we're all locked up? And so we've decided to do these casted book reads. And we put it out there. We were really, you know, so shocked with the response. All, all these actors, these lovers, lovies that, that sort of like are doing nothing. They absolutely jumped on it. And it's, it's really, really good. And then any of the money that we make goes to the NHS COVID-19 emergency fund. Which, so you feel like you're doing your bit. It's fantastic. I highly encourage everyone to check that out and tune in and watch it and contribute if you can to support our amazing NHS as well. Yeah, exactly. Now, I want to take you back when you were four. For your first television appearance, you appeared in a fairy washing up liquid advert. But you always wanted to get into acting even at that early age? I think uh, from a very, very early age, I was quite aware that um, I used to be able to make people laugh. So, you know, when we went over to friends' houses and, uh, you know, I, my, my parents didn't really push me into it, but I used to really enjoy you know, taking people off and uh, things like that. And just, I love that feeling of making people laugh. Um, so I suppose right from the start, it was a little bit of a show off, yeah. <laughs> And then in 1978, you starred in Rosie Dixon Night Nurse along with your sister Debbie. But a year later, you were one of the leads in Quadrophenia. Would you consider that to be your, your actual big break? Quadrophenia was yeah. definitely my big break because I sort of like fell into modelling. I was working in Jean Machine in the King's Road selling jeans, and Brian Harris uh, uh, came in and, and uh, it was a really well-known photographer and he asked me if I was interested in getting into modeling and although that sounds a bit weird I mean that's what used to happen in the King's Road you know that's where all models used to get scouted and things like that so I started doing teenage magazines and I actually got the audition for Quadrophenia through being a model actually so I got it wow. from my, my modeling agency so um, I think that's because Frank Rodham um, was very much like a, a documentary film director he wanted everything to be really real and so he didn't want an actress he, he, he I think he wanted someone who looked right you know so yeah. therefore I suppose that's why I got it yeah that's amazing and people of course still speak about that film today and of course I am to you what do you attribute to the film's lasting success and popularity I think the rawness of it, the realness, obviously the music, I mean, the Who, you know, that, that soundtrack is absolutely fantastic. And I, I, I listen to it still today, you know, when I, when I hear it, it sends shivers up my spine. I just absolutely adore it. So, yes, the Who. But I also think, uh, because we just celebrated last year 40 years, so we were doing a lot of, like, these little conventions, and I'd never done any of these before, and it was like a real eye-opener that, that how many fans there are out there, dedicated fans with the scooters, the clothes, because it, it, that's what it was all about. It was about kids that sort of started wearing really well-cut suits and stuff like that, took a, a real, you know, took care of how they looked and getting ready to go out it was a real lifestyle you know really was amazing time now in 1983 people may not know this you're in the curse of the pink panther not only were you in the film you were in an amazing fight scene can you tell me did you do all of your own choreography there's a scene where you, you flip over someone's back did you have any specialist training for that did anyone get hurt I know that was an amazing film to get because at the time all the Pink Panther films one of my favorite actors was Peter Sellers and unfortunately he died but Blake Edwards wanted to carry it on and so I did my film with uh, a guy called Ted Wass who was in a series called Soap in America and it was you know he was very very famous and when I got the part I knew that there was going to be this sort of Kempo karate 
fight, fight scene in it. And this was um, the guy who started Kempo Karate was a guy called, oh my God, I can't remember his name now. It's just gone flown right on my head. Ed, someone, and he taught Elvis. And oh, so wow. there was this, yeah, I know. There was this real, um, I suppose everyone out there is probably shouting it at the screen now, but I can't <laughs> remember it. It's Ed Parker, Ed Parker, thank you. And so, um, yeah, no, it was all choreographed. We, we took this fantastic um, fight. And obviously there was, a, I think, one bit where I get slammed into a wall. I think I had a, a double for that. But most of it, yeah. And one of the best um, stuntmen, Peter, I had to hit him in the face. And, but he was trying to teach me where you sort of like, you, you go for it and you just miss him. But yeah. I, at, on the actual tape, I literally caught him straight on the <laughs> jaw. <laughs> wow. and he, he wasn't very pleased. But yeah, no, it was a great film. I got to work with people like David Niven, Joanna Lumley. Um, oh my God, there's so many people in that film. Yeah, because I, I was looking back on your filmography and I have the Pink Panther film collection and I went back and rewatched it. It was a lot of fun. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thanks all these destructible environments when you're being each other up and people are punching through walls and using frying pans and all that stuff. I know, and, and that one little tiny sequence took about three days to shoot as well. Wow. I'm not surprised to see because it was, it was quite involved. It was quite a long scene as well, and I could see there must have been a lot of choreography there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, in 1985, you, of course, famously starred in the crime series Cat Size with Frederica Smith, Fred Smith, but can you remember what CATS stood for? It was Covert Activities TEM section. It's correct. <laughs> now, I love that series because I, I, I used to like the professionals, you know, the professionals. Mm -hmm. And so this is the nearest I could get to it. So there's Tracy Louise Ward, uh, Jill Gascoigne, who was amazing, who I actually worked with on uh, Gentle Touch. That was yeah. my first job in Tent TV. And we just had a ball just running around, driving fast cars, yeah. learning how to do handbrake turns. <laughs> we had guns. We had these amazing hairstyles. And yeah. oh my God, it was just so unbelievable, but very enjoyable to do. Absolutely. And it's fun looking back on too, because you're, of course, you're the computer expert in the show. And the, the computers back then were quite different. And the monitors were this big. And know, I did not know what I was doing then. And I do <laughs> not know, know what, what I do now. 1992, you were, of course, cast in Men Behaving Badly as Deborah. At the time, it was on ITV with Harry Enfield. How did you first get involved in that? Well, it was, so the story goes, and so he's told me, uh, Simon Nye, who actually wrote the book, um, when he was writing the character Deborah, he actually had me in mind to do it. So um, when Beryl Virtue read uh, Men Behaving Badly, the book, which I think she read on, on an aeroplane going, going to America, and then by the time she got to America, she knew that she wanted to, to make this program. She thought it was absolutely fantastic. And um, so I was very lucky. So that I was actually seen for the part of Deborah. I had to go for an audition for the part of Deborah and uh, just luckily got it. So I was told that um, Harry Enfield was in it, Martin Clunes and myself um, and Caroline Quentin. Um, and so we started doing the, the, the sort of f first series, which was like a pilot. Um, and it, it was, it was great, but it was really different. Uh, it was different from how it ended up to be. It, it was more, I mean, Harry, I think, cause Harry Enfield is such an amazing character, you know, himself and all his shows. I love his shows. And, um, I think what, what it, it felt like we were sort of like, there was Harry and then us three behind him sort of like. So he decided he didn't want to do any more, uh, which, was, which was fine. You know, everyone understood and, and that. He did, I don't think he really enjoyed it much. And then when they brought Neil on, it became about four of us. Do you know what I mean? Um, and, uh, well, the rest is history, really. They, they, the, you know, the Martin and, and Neil's characters just, um, that's what made the whole series, really. And, of course, yourself and Caroline as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I was the I was the the long suffering Deborah, uh, which is always good fun to do. Um, yeah. you know, it was something different because I think it was one of the first times you really, you know, saw women act a bit like men in a way. You know, they got some really good laughs as well. Now the the series ran for for six series and there was last orders as well. Looking back now, what were your what were your favourite episodes and perhaps scenes to film? 
of men behaving badly. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh gosh, there's so many really. I used to, I used to like doing, uh, when we used to do OBs out, outside broadcasts and we used to go off and film in different places. I think one of the Christmas specials in that old house when we're all singing, you know, like uh, the, those silly carol songs. Um, yeah, the Christmas special when uh, Martin ends up with a chicken on his head, <laughs> turkey on his head. Uh, also, the um, they're all scenes without me in it, but uh, I, I love that when Caroline had her appendix out as well. Yeah. That one really makes. Is that me when look. Gary goes to lick it or something? Yeah. Yeah, he makes this like little mobility thing with all things yeah. hanging off of it, and um, Neil and and getting his glasses. That's, uh, I, I really love that one. Yeah. There are so many amazing episodes, aren't there? The, the final episode, I think, drew 13.9 million viewers. Wow. Are you still in contact with the cast? And would you, and I hope the answer is yes, ever consider going back, coming back for another series? I, I would, yeah. That's, that's one, you know. But uh, no, it's two. I, think... I, I interviewed Neil Morrissey, so we have two now. Okay. So, oh, that's yeah, there we go. We're halfway there. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's like we, we spent sort of like oh, good eight years together doing these series, really, mm. after doing the series, the specials and, and the mini series. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, we got on, we were all, I think you're always very, very close to the people that you're working with. You become a family yeah. type thing. And um, it's always sad when it ends and you, you never, ever think that you're never going to see these people again. But it's really strange because you then go on to another job and you become another family. Yeah. Uh, and it is, it is a shame. It's probably we, we haven't kept in contact as much as we probably should have done. But, sure. Uh, yeah, they've all gone on to do different things. Well, we're going to have to get everybody back together now, aren't we? Now, yeah. uh, what do you imagine Tony and Deborah might be doing these days? Would they still be together? Yeah, I'd like to think so. Yeah, I um, think... I'd, I'd like to think they are. Um, and probably not too dissimilar to where they are, you know, where they were then. Um, probably still bickering and arguing and stuff like that and him doing silly things. I can't imagine he's grown up much. No. <laughs> and um, in 1996, she actually released a, a single with Caroline called Tell Him. How did that come about? That came about because the boys uh, for, I think it was for Comic Relief or something, did a book uh, called Men Behaving Badly. Yeah. And it was all things yeah. about... And they said, did, did the girls want to do a women behaving badly? But, but we thought, actually, we just end up looking a bit slutty, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we decided, we'll both sing. Let's do yeah. a single, you know, see how that goes. And it was, oh, it was fantastic. It was just so enjoyable. And then we went on a little tour, um, touring around all, all, the, all the different places. Um, yeah, so no, that's how that came about. That was really enjoyable. I like I like doing the video of that. That was yeah. Oh, it was pink vinyl as well. I've I've got one actually. Yeah. Have you really? It's amazing. Oh, you should definitely do another one. Put a whole album together. I think I'd definitely <laughs> try that. <laughs> well, we're a bit old now. <laughs> You're not old at all. Oh, thanks. Of course, in two thousand and four, you came down with that super bug. How how are you? Now, since that obviously that was a long recovery and you're in hospital for a long time, how are you feeling and doing in yourself? I'm feeling good now. I'm, um, it, it was a really strange thing to happen, really, because uh, it, it literally changed my life mm. o overnight like that. Yeah. And it's now when you're, when you're sort of like in this sort of uh, COVID time of lockdown, it's reminding me exactly what it was like actually back in 2004 when I was in hospital and you literally, I couldn't sit up. I had to be hoisted out of a bed. So you mm. did a lot of looking out the window and you sort of like felt confined, you know, you couldn't, couldn't get out. So I think you sort of, sort of I learned how to sort of meditate and, and get, you've just got to get through it. That's, that's, you just got to put your head down and just get through it. You can't rush anything. And it, it took a long time, every single different process from, from sitting up to learning how to walk has taken years rather yeah. than uh, months. But uh, no, I go, go to the gym, or I should be going to the gym about three to four times a week because that really keeps the strength in, in my legs and my core stability. Yeah. Without that, then I, I do struggle a bit. Mm. So I've got about 50% of my um, strength in my legs at the moment, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do little things, set up a little gym at home. Good. Um, but mentally, I think mentally I've done really well because 
they had me on a lot of different medications and um, you, you sort of stay on them because you think, oh, right, well, that's it. And they tell you you're going to be on these medications for life. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, you don't, I found out you don't have to be. Um, so I managed to get off the, the real mind bending ones. Um, yeah. And I feel a lot better for that. I feel, I feel sort of like my old spark is back and I've got, you know, there's things I want to do, you know. I'm so happy you, you got past that and you look amazing and you're doing amazing creative things and it's good to have you back. Thank you. <laughs> now in 2007 you released the book My Life Behaving Badly. Have you considered writing a follow-up since that? How, things you've done since or other stuff you want to write about perhaps? Um, yeah, there is. I think when I, I never even thought about writing a book, but when I was in hospital, um, there's a lovely actress called Lynn Ferguson and, uh, she's Scottish and she came, I used to do that. She's a writer as well. And she came in to see me in the hospital with a great big gold book and a, a flamingo comedy pen. And she gave it to me and she says, right, you've got nothing to do now. I can't do a Scottish accent. So write a book. And so I just started writing things down every day about my recovery. And then when I came out, I thought, actually, I've, I've got enough now for a book. Um, so sort of like put the feelers out. Unfortunately, it's sort of like, it was at that time when all the celebrities were doing books, you know, just before yeah. Christmas. And it fell into that category. And I really didn't want it to fall into that category. I wanted it to be about recovery. Yeah. So, um, I was a bit disappointed with that, but I would write a follow-up. I think, yeah, I, I definitely would, um, but I would need a bit of help with writing it because um, I left school at 15, so I'm, I'm not very good at writing. But um, the way I managed to do the other one was she, uh, um, lovely Megan Lloyd-Davies, she would give me dates, uh, and I, I keep diaries, not journals, but just yeah. I keep my diaries. So I'd look and see, oh, what was I doing on that day? And uh, that's how I then got found pictures to, to do that. And then I would sit and blabble on, rabble on, you know, <laughs> do all this writing. And then poor Megan would have to get it into some sort of form. Um, and then that's how we did it. So, yeah, I would, because it has been an interesting, it's been 17 years, isn't it? Yeah. 17 years. So um, it's it's been, I think, also becoming, going through my 50s as well. Um, mm. That was a bit of a shock because, unfortunately, my mum died when I was 40. Sorry, um, yeah, I lost mine four months ago. Exactly. Yeah, and then I lost my dad in 4004 after all that shit. But, um, so I had no one to sort of like ask how, how you get through your 50s, what about menopause and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. So that was all a bit of a shock, actually. And I, I think that's it. That's all you know is you get hot flushes and there's so much more to it. There's so much more to it. I mean, your, your, you know, your head, your thoughts, you know, you get a bit of depression, but you, you can get yourself out of it. It's about diet as well. And just uh, there's, you'd like a bit more information. I'm sure it's all out there now, but. Yeah, but a lot of these things people sort of go through on a day-to-day -day basis and just don't talk about or they don't feel it's appropriate to post on Facebook or Twitter or wherever, wherever it is and they kind of have suffer in silence or they yeah. know anyone else going through it. And I think you're right, if there was a book or a resource or something that people could just go, okay, this is normal, it's okay. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. That, that's what I needed. I needed a book that I could reference, yeah. It's one thing I try and do, even in my show, is create content that I'd like to see myself. So if something's not out there, I try and make that for other people that may want it. Yeah, that's a great thing to do, yeah. And by the way, your, your book is available on Amazon and you can get it on Kindle as well. So people could just download it, put it on your phone or your Kindle or whatever device you have and read it now. You've got time to do it and I highly recommend it. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Good book. You've obviously starred in things like Where the Heart Is and Holby City. What do you prefer starring in, drama or comedy? Oh, that's a tough one. I, Where the Heart Is was, was, oh, that was a lovely experience because um, I, I, I'd lived in Yorkshire before because yeah. my husband played for Leeds United and I loved my time up there. But I was doing Men Behaving Badly, so I spent most of my time on the M1 coming down to do <laughs> Men Behaving Badly. Right. And then when we moved down to London, I then got Where the Heart Is, which is shot up in Yorkshire. <laughs> 
So I spent all my time going up on the train up there. The, the, I just love it up there. I love the whole countryside. Um, I love the people up, up there. So I had a, a really wonderful time doing Where the Heart Is and the stories and stuff. And some of the directors we work with, some of the writers and, and the actors as well. They were just always gorgeous. Um, but um, I think Holby City was the, the one that I, that was the first job I did coming back disabled. Um, right. And uh, I just, uh, as I said, I was on these uh, painkillers and stuff like that. And I, I felt as though I was acting in slow motion a lot of the time. Right. So, um, I mean, I was only meant to do three months, ended up doing seven months and I loved it. But it's really strange, the difference between being an actress and having, you know, being able to run around and play cops and, and all that and men behaving badly and it was all fast moving. Sure. To to doing something like Holby City, which was actually quite difficult, but um, no, nevertheless, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. So I then actually watched the show before, and then I heard you were going to be in it, so I tuned in, which was good. What kind of shows do you watch at the moment? What things are you enjoying, and is there anything you, you'd love to be in? Devs, have you seen yeah. that? Yeah. I can I can binge, and I do that a lot. Actually, I love sitting there and just enjoying a really nice series oh there's there's quite a lot out there that i've been really enjoying um i do like a, a bit of belgravia been, <laughs> oh and of course killing eve but my favorite character and spoiler mm. spoiler alert my favorite mm -hmm. character just he ended up dying in the first episode it's unnecessary they killed kenny <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was my favorite character so you know, it's most unnecessary when they do that, isn't it? But then they do say that if you, that the expression is kill your darlings, isn't it? So the most popular or the most loved characters are the ones that are normally in the most yeah. risk. Yeah. Kind of programs, yeah. massive problems. Yeah. There, there's lots out there. And thank, you know, thank God there is actually. Otherwise I think I'll be going crazy. And <laughs> thank God I've got a dog that I can go out and walk. Yeah. Um, and um, you yeah, know, just binge watch TV. Put a little bit of weight on though, I must admit, that's just, just because I'm scoffing. <laughs> it's highly problematic. I've been preemptively just doing that anyway by just watching stuff all the time and it's kind of the same for me, so. <laughs> it's like, oh it's yeah, what... this, this is quarantine weight, that's definitely what that was. I know, it's got to be lockdown <laughs> weight, yeah. Yeah. No, I blame it on the gym not being open, that's it. That, that is it, that is the problem. I had I actually got a gym membership once and I had it I bought an entire year's membership thinking that would encourage me to go but it turns out it didn't <laughs> I, I just felt good having the membership it's like yeah I've got a gym membership you know so yeah I can here yeah. <laughs> that's bad that's bad oh, well. <laughs> now in uh, 2014 you're on Celebrity MasterChef do you still enjoy cooking what are your favorite dishes I love uh, oh god love doing roast dinners I mean, you might see them on my Instagram page. I'm always doing yeah. roast dinners. I really wanted my kids to be able to, I've got two boys and I really wanted them to uh, learn how to cook and, and they are really good. And they tell me off because they always stick to the recipe. Yeah. I always, always deviate and, and it's always a bit of a mistake. But I, I like roast dinners. I like, you know, nice uh, pasta dishes and uh, stir fries and stuff like that. That's what I like to cook. Master Chef. I really enjoyed doing that yeah. and uh, you know I was a, a bit of a, a panicker because you have to practice all these dishes so, um, so my poor kids I remember them having venison for about five days <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no that's such a good show to do in yeah. fact Frank Rodham that was his concept you know the director of Quadrophenia oh, wow. actually that was that was his idea Master Chef. I didn't know that. Sort of came full circle yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, it's even when practicing at home, though, it doesn't compare, I imagine, to the, the pressure of not only just being filmed, but having these professional chefs and having a deadline and perhaps cooking things for people in a restaurant or something like that. Yeah. It's a whole different thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, it is. I, I did that. I actually got as far as where I had to cook things and take them into the room, do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> That's when I went out, yeah. <laughs> that was the last thing I did. Bloody I'd Wayne probably, sleep. <laughs> terrible. I'd probably burn the salad and everything. It was good. Really good fun. 
Yeah, now you have also launched Books Office with Elaine Sturgis. Can you tell me all about it? Books Office is a, a website that uh, Elaine Sturgis came up with. I worked with Elaine. Uh, she uh, wrote this hilariously funny comedy book. Well, no, it's not just comedy. It's a comedy drama book called Gin and It. And um, so there's a character in that. She wanted to make a, a trailer because she, she wanted to pitch it to be made into a series. And she asked me if I wanted to play the part of Teresa in, in, this, um, in her trailer. Mm. So I said, yes. We got on like a house on fire. And then we, we re realised together how actually difficult it is to pitch to broadcasters because broadcasters basically like to tell us what to watch. Um, and so we thought there must be an idea where the public can actually choose what they want to watch. So she started this website uh, where um, published and self-published authors can put their books online mm. and then they bring their readers and it's a, it's not, they're not necessarily uh, famous authors, but they, they do sell a lot of books, but you might not have heard of them because perhaps they've not been... Um, you know, publicized in the way that some of these really, really big bestsellers have. Because uh, Amazon, you have to sell a certain amount of books before they actually really look at publicizing you and stuff yeah. like that, and pub publishers as well. So um, up there, all their books went, and then we asked the public to choose on which one they would like to see made into a trailer. And this was all going well, and we got our first book, and then lockdown happened. So we were seriously thinking, oh, what are we going to do now? And so we just thought, why don't we do these book reads on Zoom? Yeah. Um, and we start to get people like Alex Lajos. He, he's in, in one of them uh, with me. We did Amanda Sue Heller's book, Broke, which is a yeah. gritty Manchester drama. We had, uh, um, Oh God, who else did we have? We had, oh, Brian Capron was the narrator, Jack Dean. Um, oh God, a whole host of actors just stepped up and we had such a ball. So we did three, three a week. Um, for, and then we did that for, for three days and it got so many you know, remarks on Twitter. Everyone really, really liked it. So we're going to carry on doing them. Oh, so fantastic. we're doing... Yeah, we're doing uh, The Doll Maker, I think is next. And then we're going to do Gin and It. So I'll let everyone know when we're doing Gin and It because mm. they should really ch tune in to Zoom when we do it. It's normally Absolutely. from about three o'clock. Well, we might do that in the evening, actually. I, I don't know when we're going to do that. But uh, I'll, if they look on my, on my Instagram, they'll, they'll, I'll keep them informed when that's coming out. So I highly recommend everyone does that and I'll be tuning in too. Good, good. You love yeah. it. You love it. I really am looking forward to it. It sounds amazing. Now you've opened a bar, the app bar in Clapham uh, with your husband Lee. First of all, where did you get the idea from? And also, is it right that it was actually a one time your mum and dad's painting and decorating shop? Yeah, well done. Yeah. Well, exactly. My mum and dad uh, and uh, my sister and I moved there when I was about 12. So that would have been 72. Uh, mm. My father started up a paint and wallpaper shop. Yeah. And my mother worked in it. And then um, then they sort of like went off and lived in Spain for a while. And, and the, the shop didn't do so well while they went off and lived in Spain. Um, I used to work in there. We used to live above it. We, yeah, we used to live above oh, wow. it in the flat. And I used to work on Saturdays in, in the shop. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. <laughs> um, so anyway, what happened was is my, my mum... It was very difficult to, to keep that shop, uh, especially when places like Home Base and B&Q uh, were basically selling their stuff. You know, there's other yeah, shops okay. to go to. And, uh, and so Home Base had such great adverts as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that, that's the whole problem, actually. I, I feel really guilty. There's Neil and, and me doing these Home Base commercials and basically putting my mother out of business, you know. <laughs> But anyway, she, she was, had been getting, you know, she'd had enough of it, really. She wanted to retire. Um, and so we took over the lease. Lee and I took over the lease. Yeah. And uh, we made it into a bar called So UK. Yeah. And that 
went on for absolutely years and years and years. And it was only last year we decided to rebrand it because everyone really thought of So UK playing house music and, mm, and being yeah. sort of like quite hardcore. So we thought we wanted to, we wanted to make it, you know, a bit more upmarket, put in some really new, nice seating and lighting and stuff like that. So we did that last year. Yeah. And then all this Brexit thing, you know, people started not going out so much and then we had bloody not drinking on january dry january yeah and now this so um we've not really had a chance to really get up and go but as soon as this is over i hope um hope people will come back and have all those birthday parties and and um engagement parties and People, I don't know what it's going to look like after this. What do you reckon? I'm going to have to go and find out and have a drink now and check it out. So I've got a belated Easter, Halloween, birthday, Christmas, New Year's extravaganza that I'm holding out on right now. <laughs> well, you can definitely have it at, at bar. Uh, I'd love to. When you're in London, i would yes. be very upset if you don't come, and, come in and see us. Very much looking forward to just going outside. I vaguely remember what outside is like. I see it on TV sometimes, but it's weird just seeing people interact with each other. I like know. Sit next to each other now. I know. Will we be able to be that close again? Maybe we'll all be, always be doing social distancing. Yeah, there's a film coming out called To Be Someone, and I think it was scheduled to come out in April. But I don't, oh. I don't know what's going on with it now. And you have a part in that, don't you? And my understanding is there's people from Quadrophenia and there's a mod setting, but it's not a sequel to Quadrophenia. What can you tell yeah. us about the film? Well, I think when, it, when the book was originally written, um, I think it, it was supposed to sort of like be the characters of Quadrophenia, what happened to them. Right. Um, but then they, they fell into a bit of copyright problems with uh, The Who um, owning quadrophenia so they changed it completely so right. you're right it's got quite a few people from quadrophenia in it that they've got toya myself gary shale trevor laird mark winget so that's five out of that yeah. lineup um and it no it was just it was a ball actually uh, it was a really really nice film it was, um it's just really nice to get out there see everyone um dress up and it's a good it's a great story it's a really nice little british film yeah so when it does come out and the music is amazing as well yeah. um to it um so it'll be really nice it, I, i'll be interested to see how people how people like it but i i think it, it it's good sam gittings is amazing in it oh, very much. i look forward to watching it when it graces our screen hopefully very soon Tell me something about you we may not know, a party trick, a fun fact. Something you might not know. I think everyone yeah. knows about everything about me, actually. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, oh, I just, I like, I, I love wine. I do. My husband and I, we, we like to collect wine. We like to go all over really? the place in France. Yeah, collecting wine and stuff like that. So I do think of myself as a little bit of a, a wine buff. Um, although I gave up drinking for 17 years while I was yeah. learning how to walk. So this is all a bit new. I only just started drinking again. And, um, do you have any favourites? I missed wine, red wine, white wine, burgundy. Mm. Yeah, I like white burgundy and I like yeah. really like Spanish, Italian wines, Rioja. Um, yep, that's it. That's, that's <laughs> what people might not know about me. Absolutely. There's, I lived in California for a while and there were these massive vineyards you could go out and visit and they're just really beautiful. And there's an actor mm. called Sam Neill who was in Jurassic Park who lives yeah. in New Zealand and has a vineyard there and posts these gorgeous photos. So I'd love to go for that. Yeah. Just try the one. No, I know. Yeah, there's a few actors that have got vineyards. That, um, yeah, no, there's quite a few. You could do a sort of like tour of the actors' vineyards. Yeah. I've got something like that. I've probably just got some gone off fruit in the fridge, which is starting to turn into alcohol. But I probably just need to win that. You never know. <laughs> it could be all right. Try it. <laughs> so can you tell me what you might be working on next? Any stuff you might have coming out? And also any dream roles as well? Anything you'd love to do, be it on stage or screen mm -hmm. or music or anywhere? Well, I think with these book reads, um, mm -hmm. 
uh, if people want to find out about it, do they can go to books office. But we're going to actually carry on doing these. Yes. Because I think it's actually a new thing. It's like an audio book, but you're yeah. you're in vision, and um, I think it's a, it's a really nice thing to do. So I think we're going to sort of like go down that route and, and just carry on doing them, okay. um, and that that gives me the opportunity. Well, well, also gives everyone the opportunity to look to to watch and think. Oh, actually, that would make a really good program, yeah. you know, or a film or something. So, you know, it might be quite useful. Um, and uh, then I can choose my own parts. <laughs> that's, it, that's it. That's perfect. <laughs> I, I love my show too, shining the spotlight on comedians that people may not have discovered yet, be it from America or you know musicians uh, or magicians or anyone like that. Because some people have amazing talent, but they just haven't had an opportunity yet. Well, that, that's it. That's what this is really good for. This, yeah. honestly, I mean, we did our first reading, as I said, it finished on Friday. And um, the audience, we, we got, we invited them to come meet the cast afterwards. Oh, wow. And they were all from Pittsburgh. It was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, gosh, how did that happen? So but Amanda Sue Heller, obviously, is a big uh, fan base over, over in America, yeah. That's pretty well. You're going to have to go out to Pittsburgh now with your, your new audience and be stuck yes. on as well. You might I have, have to Australian that. people tuning in. <laughs> I know my son's living in, in Australia and I've told him he's got to watch it and tell me what it's like. Oh, fantastic. Whereabouts in Australia? He's in Sydney at the moment. Yeah, but hopefully he's, he should be coming home soon. Hopefully. He's been out there for two and a half years. Oh, wow. And he got engaged. He's, he, he went over there with his girlfriend and then proposed to her. And uh, I just want them to come back now. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's been a while, right? It's time to yeah. come back. And, yeah. yeah. You've been out there at all? No. no. Too it's far. Just, it's quite far. The only place in Australia I've been with Sydney as it happens. And it might be better now, but when I flew out there, because the flight's obviously 24 hours long, I watched literally every film that I'd ever want to watch on that mm. flight. On the flight back, it was the same films. So I ended up just listening to oh, like no, music no. for an entire day. I listened to like a, a live Lionel Richie concert and just random relaxing orca sounds for a while because there's nothing else to do. And then oh, you just no. end up watching the map with the little plane going across. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, just wishing it to get closer yeah. and closer and closer. So yeah, you're, no. you're convinced it isn't moving anymore to be staring at it for three hours. I know. I don't. I don't really like long haul flights. I. I, I don't think my body would put up with it really because it. Oh no, it hurts. It's not good. They need to improve that somehow. I don't know whether we need a giant catapult or something. When we did cat size, we had to go over to Australia to, to uh, promote it over there, and we literally did two days in Sydney, two days in Melbourne, and then the rest of it was obviously flying. You know, but uh, well, I wouldn't recommend that in one week. No, yeah, I, I think I went there and back in about five days, but yeah, no. that was work related. But yeah, obviously, if I was yeah. going there properly, I'd go for a month or something. So. Yeah, yeah. Now, finally, have you got any messages for people watching the Sarah O'Connell show and your fans around the world? My fans around the world, oh, yeah, well, Pittsburgh. Just thank you for being supportive and staying with me. That's that's always I'm always forever grateful. Leslie Ash, it's been a delight and an honour to have you on my show today. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks for asking. My pleasure. And um, thank you to everybody watching at home. Be sure to share, subscribe, give this video a big thumbs up and leave lots of lovely mm. comments. And I'll see you all again soon for another episode of the Sarah O'Connell Show. Bye. Bye. <laughs>